Have you ever wondered why the ground beneath us, which seems so solid and secure, can sometimes shake violently? This is the enigma of earthquakes. These seismic phenomena, as unpredictable as they are fascinating, have been a subject of intrigue for centuries. From scientists trying to decode their mysteries to the layman attempting to comprehend their destructive power, earthquakes are a riveting piece of Mother Nature's puzzle. So let's embark on a journey to understand the science behind these powerful natural events. To understand earthquakes, we first need to understand the structure of our planet. So let's embark on a journey to the center of the Earth. Now don't worry, we won't need a drill, just our imaginations. Our Earth is not one solid mass. It's more like an onion, composed of several layers, each with its own distinct characteristics. The outermost layer is the crust, the solid ground we walk on. It's relatively thin, ranging from about 3 to 45 miles thick. This crust is not one continuous sheet, but rather it's broken into large pieces known as tectonic plates. Beneath the crust lies the mantle, a thick layer of semi-fluid rock that extends about 1,800 miles deep. The mantle is not molten lava, as some might think, but it's hot enough to keep the rock in a ductile or pliable state. This allows the tectonic plates to float on its surface, much like icebergs float on the ocean. Diving deeper, we reach the core, which is divided into two parts. The outer core, a sea of molten iron and nickel, and the inner core, a solid ball of these same metals. The heat from these layers creates convection currents that rise and sink, pushing and pulling the tectonic plates above. Now these tectonic plates don't just float around aimlessly, they're constantly moving, albeit at a pace slower than the growth of your fingernails. Sometimes they slide past each other, sometimes they collide, and other times they pull apart. These interactions at plate boundaries can cause the crust to deform, creating mountains, deep sea trenches, and yes, earthquakes. But don't let the slow pace fool you. While the movement of these plates may be imperceptibly slow, the energy they store can be released in an instant, resulting in the ground-shaking phenomenon we know as an earthquake. These tectonic plates are constantly moving, and it's their movement that leads to earthquakes. So the next time you feel the ground shake beneath your feet, remember, it's just Earth's way of reminding us that it's alive and always changing. So, how does the movement of these tectonic plates cause the ground to shake, you might ask? Well, it all comes down to the science of seismic waves. Let's imagine that the Earth's crust is like a puzzle, a puzzle made up of huge pieces called tectonic plates. These plates are constantly moving, albeit very slowly, due to the heat and pressure from below. But sometimes they get stuck. This is because the edges of these plates are rough and catch onto each other. When this happens, stress builds up along these edges, which are known as faults. Now this stress doesn't just disappear. Instead, it continues to build up until it's too great for the faults to hold. And when this happens, the stress is released in the form of seismic waves, causing the ground to shake. There are three main types of seismic waves that we need to know about. P waves, S waves, and surface waves. P waves, or primary waves, are the fastest. They move in a push-pull motion, much like sound waves, and can travel through solids, liquids, and gases. This is why they're the first waves to be detected by seismographs during an earthquake. Next up are the S waves, or secondary waves. These waves are slower than P waves and move in an up and down motion. Unlike P waves, S waves can only travel through solids, which is why they're not detected in the Earth's outer core, which is liquid. Finally, we have surface waves. As the name suggests, these waves travel along the Earth's surface. They're slower than both P waves and S waves, but they're responsible for the most damage during an earthquake. This is because they cause the ground to move in a rolling motion, much like waves in the ocean. So, there you have it. The energy released by these seismic waves rippling through the Earth, shaking and rattling everything in their path, is what we feel as an earthquake. Earthquakes can range from minor tremors that barely shake your coffee cup to major quakes that can flatten cities. But how do we measure their strength? When it comes to measuring earthquakes, there are a couple of scales that come into play. The Richter scale developed in the early 20th century by Charles F. Richter is one such scale. It quantifies the amplitude of seismic waves, which are essentially the vibrations produced by an earthquake. 
These measurements are then used to calculate the magnitude of an earthquake on a logarithmic scale. This means an earthquake measuring 6 on the Richter scale releases 10 times more energy than one measuring 5. In contemporary times, seismologists often use the Moment Magnitude Scale, or MW. This scale is a more accurate tool for measuring larger, more powerful earthquakes. It calculates the total energy released by an earthquake, factoring in the size of the area that slipped, the average amount of slip along the fault, and the rigidity of the rocks involved. This allows for a more comprehensive understanding of an earthquake's true power. Now you may be wondering, can we predict these seismic surprises? Well, the truth is, despite the leaps and bounds made in seismology, predicting earthquakes with any degree of certainty remains elusive. While scientists can identify areas of high seismic risk and forecast the likelihood of seismic activity over long periods, the precise timing, location and magnitude of an earthquake are still largely unpredictable. Various techniques are being experimented with, such as monitoring changes in groundwater levels, raid and gas emissions, and even animal behaviour. But these methods are still in their infancy and far from being foolproof. While predicting earthquakes remains a challenge, understanding their cause and measuring their strength are crucial steps in mitigating their effects. So, although we can't stop an earthquake from occurring, with the knowledge we have we can strive to minimize its impact and better protect ourselves and our planet. So now that we understand what causes earthquakes, what does this mean for us? Our knowledge of earthquakes isn't just academic, it has profound implications for human societies, shaping everything from our building codes to our disaster preparedness efforts. Let's start with building codes. These are sets of rules that dictate how structures should be designed and constructed to withstand the forces generated by earthquakes. By understanding the science behind earthquakes, architects and engineers can design buildings that are more resilient, reducing the risk of collapse and saving countless lives. In places like Japan and California, which are prone to frequent seismic activity, this knowledge has been instrumental in protecting communities. But it's not just about building better, it's also about being prepared. Disaster preparedness is a critical aspect of living in earthquake-prone areas. This means having an emergency plan, stocking up on necessary supplies, and knowing what to do when an earthquake strikes. All of this is made possible by our understanding of how earthquakes work. Public awareness is another crucial element. The more people understand about earthquakes, the better equipped they are to protect themselves and their communities. That's why education initiatives are so important. They help to demystify the science behind earthquakes, making it more accessible and less intimidating. Scientific research is the bedrock of all these efforts. By studying earthquakes, scientists can learn more about how they work, leading to better prediction models and improved safety measures. This research is ongoing and every new discovery brings us one step closer to mitigating the risks associated with earthquakes. So you see, the science of earthquakes isn't just fascinating, it's also incredibly practical. It informs our actions, shapes our societies and ultimately helps us to protect ourselves. By understanding the science behind earthquakes, we can better prepare for them and reduce their impact on our lives. Earthquakes are a powerful reminder of the dynamic nature of our planet. They shake us, quite literally, into a profound awareness of the world beneath our feet. We've journeyed together into the depths of the earth, peeling back the layers to reveal the core, mantle and crust. It's these layers and their constant restless motion that set the stage for the drama of earthquakes. Plate tectonics, the grand architect of our planet's geography, was our next stop. We delved into the colossal forces at play as Earth's lithospheric plates grind, collide and slide past one another, spawning earthquakes in their wake. From there we dove into the science of seismic waves those invisible ripples coursing through the earth at breakneck speed, carrying the energy of an earthquake from its epicenter to the furthest corners of the globe. We then moved on to the tools and techniques that help us measure these tremors and to some extent predict their occurrence. Seismographs, Richter scales and the promising field of earthquake forecasting were all on the agenda. Lastly, we took a human-centric view, 
exploring the impact of earthquakes on society, the devastation they can cause, and our resilience in the face of such natural disasters. With a better understanding of the science behind earthquakes, we can better appreciate the power of our planet and our place within it. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring and keep learning. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps our channel grow and continue to create new and interesting content. We encourage you to express your thoughts on the video in the comments and share our content with others.